We've just heard about the leadership and accomplishments of today's commencement speaker and of her commitment to providing opportunities to others. It is my great honor to introduce your commencement speaker, Susan M. Cameron. Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning to the honored graduates, families and friends, distinguished guests, members of the Bellarmine University faculty and administration, ladies and gentlemen. It's a beautiful day here in Louisville, and of course we must start by wishing all of the mothers out there a very special day tomorrow, and especially my mother who's also with us today. Cheers to the moms. Now it is my great pleasure to be back on this campus to celebrate this very special day of the graduates. It's an honor to join you for your commencement ceremony and to share in your celebration. Now I can vaguely remember what you're, where you are today, feeling very proud, already impatient, and I remember thinking that the only thing between me and my degree was the person speaking and doing this speech. So, in the event that you're having some similar thoughts, I will honor your achievement and keep my comments brief. If you're like I was, you view your degree as a first-class ticket to success. With at least four years of university under your belt, you're ready to go out there and conquer the world. Now that's how I felt in 1980 when I got my bachelor's degree. I was filled with ambition, focused on success, and I thought I knew everything I needed to know to make my mark in the business world. But boy, was I wrong. So this morning, I'm going to go out a little bit on a limb, and it might not sit well with all your professors who got you, helped you get your degree, not to mention the parents who paid for it, but I'm gonna tell you the seven secrets of success, all of which they don't teach in school. Sacrilege? Well, maybe so, but there are certain lessons in work and in business that you only learn the hard way. And you'll have your own list of these things by the time you're my age, but really, if, why bother to get an ex-CEO up here to talk to you if I don't give you a little inside dirt on how to get ahead? So the first thing you need to realize is this. You are probably defining success all wrong. If you're like I was when I got my degree, I pictured success as a thing, something I would have, something I would own, or like a place I would be. I thought you kind of measured success by the size of your paycheck, but what you could buy, and how many people worked for you. Now all that has a place, but success as I define it today is much bigger than that. Success is immortality. Now, you're probably thinking, this woman has a serious ego. She wants to be immortal. But hear me out. The legacy that you leave behind you in this world is, is the difference that you make in the countless lives and careers of the paths you cross. This is your best shot at immortality. How will the business world or your personal world or society at large be different because you were here. If people can't imagine what their lives would be like without you, you know the meaning of success. So how do you get there? Here are my seven secrets. First, who you are is a heck of a lot more important than what you know. Because no matter how smart you are, or how well you have learned every accounting principle or every little bit of anatomy, there are people out there who are smarter than you. At a bare minimum, they learned the material just as well as you did. And here is where your personality kicks in. Can you work better with others? Can you make the team laugh and break the tension in the room? Can you help create a compromise that satisfies both sides? If you want to succeed, you have to add value. Bring something to your job every day that makes you different from your coworkers. Make your boss glad that you're on the team. Secret number two, meet and greet the people on your street. 
This may sound odd, but everyone in this world needs to be treated with respect. And they won't value you if you don't value them. If you see the cleaning crew every night in your office, learn their names. Tease the security guard when you come in and out of the building and chat with him about his favorite basketball team. Ask the clerk to show you the pictures of his or her grandchildren. Now, anyone with an ounce of sense uh, will try to impress the CEO, but it's how you treat the people who can't advance your career. That is the true measure of your character. Got it? Number three, every so often you need to be scared because only when you try something you believe you can't do will you discover if you're right. And you'll be surprised at what you can do if you try. Henry Ford said something that I really like, whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. And I have learned that the choice is always yours. I once had 48 hours to decide whether I wanted to pull up, up stakes from right here in Louisville and move to a different country where I didn't know anybody. I was going to a job I wasn't sure I could do. But I was lucky because I learned that fear is nothing more than a dark curtain that you walk through to get to some really great opportunities on the other side. Fear is a natural reaction to the unknown. But once you think of fear as a positive reaction, and remember that it almost always leads to something that makes you grow, fear becomes a positive leading indicator. So when I had 48 hours to exit my own life, it took me one hour to decide and 47 hours to pack. Because you see, I knew something else. I knew that I could always go home. But I was never going to regret not taking the chance. And as it turned out, I spent seven years in London, two years in Hong Kong. I traveled to over 50 countries in my four overseas assignments. And it was a tremendous growing experience because fear was my friend, not my foe. Next up, secret number four, learn from your mentors and learn from your tormentors. Now, over the years, I've worked for people who were smarter than me. I've worked for some who weren't. I've worked for good managers. I've worked for bad managers. But I have been able to learn something from each and every one of them. So when you have a boss you don't like or a colleague who's a buffoon, make a list of what they're doing that you don't really like because then you've got the list of how you're going to do it differently when you're in that job. Because I'm here to tell you, learning from other people's mistakes can be a heck of a lot easier and less painful than learning them yourself. Okay, secrets number five and six, which are related. Number five, sometimes you need to be like a golden retriever. Now, what do golden retrievers do? Golden retrievers are loyal, they're friendly, and they're inclined to enter every situation believing it's going to be fantastic. Now, I like that in a dog, and I like it in a person too. And one of the most important questions you have to ask yourself as you are on your path is to ask yourself, am I having fun? Because life is too short to spend most of your waking hours doing something you don't like with people you don't like. So do not forget, you always have a choice. If you have given a job your best shot and you're still not having fun, then find another job immediately. My first job after graduation was selling office equipment. I hated it. I didn't like the products. I didn't get to be creative. I was very bored. But those six months taught me a lesson, and a lesson I will never forget. You have to be true to yourself, and you have to love what you do, because it is all about the passion. Now, golden retrievers know how to have fun. They never take everyday stuff for granted, they spend some portion of their lives just enjoying the fact that they have enough to eat, they get to lie around in the sun, and they get to play with their toys. So we all have something to learn from golden retrievers. Now number six is related. Sometimes you need to be a golden retriever, but other times you need to be a Jack Russell Terrier. So what do Jack Russell Terriers do? They leap at every opportunity. They jump and jump and jump again. 
when they're after something they want. In the business world, that might translate into being the first to volunteer for a project. It means never turning in mediocre work. It means striving for ways to get the job done better, faster, cheaper than the guy in the next office. It means speaking up when you have an idea. But there's a caution, and I'll give it to you, and it's a big one. Never overpromise and underdeliver. Performance counts, and your credibility is always key to your success. And last but not least, my seventh secret to success is to get your priorities right. No one here today wants their epitaph to read, he was a great finance manager. She was a superior structural engineer. Do not spend 90% of your time or energy on people who'd replace you tomorrow morning. Save a good portion of your time and energy for those to whom you will always be irreplaceable. Your good friends, your colleagues, and your family because it is through them that you will gain immortality. You'll change their lives just as they've changed yours. And if you're really lucky, you'll all be better off for you being here. So again, mindful that I'm all that stands between you and your hard-earned degree, I want to leave you with one last thought. You might think that your education is done when you finish school. But you are each about to learn that the real learning is just beginning. Graduating from this great university will certainly help you get your foot in the door. But how quickly and how high you climb the career ladder will greatly depend on how well you sustain the capacity and commitment to learning that you so aptly demonstrated here at Bellarmine. And there are opportunities to learn everywhere. The key to success early in your career is having the boldness and confidence to forge ahead with the knowledge that you can't possibly know everything. You also need the input and the perspective of others. And remember this, no one in any organization is indispensable, no matter how many years they've been there or how high they've climbed. And speaking of the latter, I recently came across a quote that I'd like to leave you with. The only thing between you and the top of that ladder is the ladder. And I wish every one of you an absolutely fabulous climb. Thank you and congratulations. <laughs>